All right, so BYU is a winner, 28-14 over San Diego State on senior night for BYU. First ever December home game in BYU football history goes the Cougars' way. And again, the latest regular season game on the calendar in BYU football history is BYU scores 21 in a row to win it by a score of 28-14 to 14 over San Diego State. Kalani Sitake, BYU head coach, is uh, at the podium and will be joining his Zoom press conference as soon as we see uh, Kalani start talking, and I think he's ready to go. Let's see. And then we'll take some questions. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, happy got the win. Tough game. Um, freezing cold conditions. Uh, I know that uh, it, it affected both teams, so, uh, you know, it was tough to deal with, but um, I think both teams were able to uh, fight through it all. But I'm um, just really proud of our boys for getting the win, our seniors, um, our team for protecting Lavelle's house. And um, <clears throat> this this year, you know, and, uh, just thankful to, that uh, we were able to get this win. But I think San Diego State is a great team. They, 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 their defense is a, a very physical and uh, active defense, and they, they, they're very uh, high risk, but uh, they, they're able to, you know, with some of the athleticism that they have on their team, they, they can disrupt you. And so um, give them a lot of credit for, for the game and, and being ready to play. And then on offense, I, I was really impressed with what they did up front. I, I thought, um, you know, they got a lot of yards on us. I, I thought we were uh, able to get, you know, stop some points. And that's when, when it's all said and done, that's the, that's the name of the game. But um, looking at some of the things that we can improve on defensively, we're going to try to get that done offensively and special teams. But for the most part, just glad that we were able to get this win and and a lot of a lot of energy and, and excitement from our boys. And so um, looking forward to our, our next game and next opportunity. So I'll take any questions you guys have. Thank you. All right, let's take questions from Alex Behar and then Jared Lloyd and Jay Drew. Hi, Coach. Uh, congrats on the win. So after that first quarter, you guys were able to shut out uh, San Diego State 21 to nothing. Um, and it looks like in the second half, you guys really were able to either turn them over or kind of just um, force them to punt or get them to turn over on down. So what changed after that first quarter defensively? And, and how, how did you guys kind of keep San Diego State at bay? Well, a lot of the, what happened in the, I mean, in the first quarter was they were able to just break tackles and, and um, you know, create a lot of plays. I, I thought assignment wise, we were in some good spots, but uh, you know, we just had to wrap up and, and, um, and give a lot of, I mean, their backs are hard to handle because they run low to the ground and their old lines big and physical, you know, and, and we knew they were going to hang on to the run game and try to limit our offense from getting on the field. But um, they were able to do that in the first part. Um, you know, I, I thought we gave up a lot of yards, but uh, I think to give them credit, they 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 uh, converted a lot of the third downs too. When you're looking at some of the third downs that we put them in, I'm looking at the medium and to, to long third downs. They even converted some of those, and so uh, you know, we knew that we would have to get them in in uh, behind the chains a little bit early. And um, I think it, just the fact that our guys played more assignment sound football and been tackled better. I mean, it wasn't still wasn't perfect, but I give a lot of credit to San Diego State because, I mean, those guys, are, even the quarterback can run. So um, they're able to break some tackles and, and make some plays. <clears throat> Kalani, you're down seven. They'd had a long drive and looked, at, you know, like they might go up two scores and Drew Jensen gets that pick. How big of a moment was that for your team? So happy for Drew. <laughs> Kid works hard and he studies and he gets better every day. And, um, you know, we, we thought that maybe we should have played him a little bit more last week and, and gave him some opportunities this week. And it showed. And I've and, uh, just been really proud of our, our our whole defense. But linebacking crew has, has worked really well together and and um, just proud of the things that they've done. I mean, uh, he's, he's still young, so there's a lot of football left for him to play. But getting turnovers was going to be key for us here. We thought that if we took care of the football on offense – and we were able to disrupt and try to get some, you know, some opportunities. Some uh, for us, it was it was, you know, stopping them on fourth down, and then uh, and that pick was huge for us. And so, um, you know, I'm just glad our guys were able to pull it out and, and never gave up. I mean, it, it was it looked really tough at the beginning, you know, but these guys have shown that they'll keep fighting. And and um, a lot of that is because they're assistant coaches and the coordinators, and a lot of it's because of leadership that we have on this team. 
Kalani, at the first of the week, you said you were going to find out what your team was made of after the disappointing loss out in Coastal Carolina. What what are they made of? What did you learn that they're made of? Yeah, these guys are resilient. They're hard workers, and they're going to – I just love the way that they respond to anything that, that has um, any type of adversity. And I'll go all the way to the beginning when we de- dealt with um, – the pandemic like everyone else has. And so I don't want to um, like, you know, talk too much about, but, but I was really impressed with the players individually, how hard they worked. And then collectively as a group, as a unit on offense, defense and special teams, and then as a team and um, just the leadership that we saw from those guys, it's, it's, it was really a great thing for me as a coach to, to see. And so I'm, I'm thankful for that. I have these players and I'm thankful that we have a great bunch of leaders and, not just the seniors. We have a, a bunch of leaders on our team, and uh, it's not even the leadership committee. We have so many guys that, that could that could qualify as captains for this team, and and uh, hopefully we can keep that rolling. And I, I really believe that the under, underclassmen will, will be ready to roll too. I, I see them getting older and maturing with the experience that they had this year, and, and looking forward to you know, our next opportunity. We'll see when we play again. Hopefully, we can you know keep playing football. Why wasn't Tyler Algier out there tonight? Tyler's not hurt. He just wasn't able to play in this game. All right, let's take a question from Mitch Harper, Sean Walker, and Hunter Miller. Kalani, what will be the uh, the legacy of the senior class? Because this is a group that you know was pretty much there every step of the way during your tenure as head coach. What's going to be their lasting legacy on the program? Well, I mean, I think you you see some of the things that they were be able, be able to overcome. And then, um, you know, I, I think the legacy is going to be, I think they're going to be so such great contributors in the community and they're going to do great things. Um, some of them with football and others um, around it and others in, in, in their professions. But I think the, the lasting impression that they leave on this program is the stuff that they've already done, whether it's their experience, their, their example or um, – the, the little things that, I mean, you have to understand the mentoring that happens on this team. It's just a, uh, it's a true brotherhood for these guys. And, and I know a lot of teams have that too, but uh, I, I can honestly say that the, the culture that we have here is built on love. And I, I see it every day when I see our players mentoring each other and, and teaching and learning from each other. So it's, 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 it's an awesome thing to see and glad that we got our 10th win tonight. Do you expect this to be the last regular season game for you guys? I don't know. I mean, I I was talking to some of the players, and I think it all depends on what happens with the bowl game. If the bowl game's uh, kind of in a the distant, then we would love to play next week. <laughs> but saying that for a while now, we we love playing football, and and um, you know, hopefully we can we'll see how it works. But I'm not Tom Homo, and I know he's he knows what we want. We want to play football, and depending on when the bowl game is or, or who we face in the bowl game, uh, if there's time in between, we would love to fit a game there. Kalani, you mentioned that slow start and just how how your guys were able to overcome a lot of things from what San Diego State was doing in that first quarter and whatnot. Um, Isaac Rex had a little bit of a slow start, but rebounded really, really nicely. Just what has he meant for this team, and what does it mean for him to be able to 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 kind of have that that moment in the first quarter and then rebound the way that he did to to be one of those leaders as a freshman? I just I, I love that our our team didn't give up on him and we don't give up on our guys, you know, and, and when he came off uh, on the sideline after the fumble, you know, we, the, the team had his back. And so um, we're always going to have each other's back. The players will, and the coaches will and have a lot of confidence in him. I mean, Zach kept targeting him and throwing the ball to him. So, uh, you know, mistakes don't define us. We, how we respond to him is the, is the key. And uh, you saw him make some beautiful plays and some great blocks. So, and that's that. I think you can kind of go down the line with all our players out there that that make mistakes. Some some mistakes are way more visible than others, but uh, I think the key is for us to keep believing in them and show them the faith that we that these guys can should be able to give and give the opportunity to respond from any mistakes that happen in the game. Coach, I want to piggyback off that Isaac Rex talk a little bit. He joined some pretty exclusive company tonight. He's the first BYU tight end to have ten or more receiving touchdowns in a single season since Johnny Harleen in two thousand six. Back in August when you first started the season, did you foresee Isaac having this kind of impact in this role in your offense? And what's led 
him to have such great success here in 2020? Well, his dad's an All-American, so I think the g- genetic pool is really good for him. You know, and then we'll be excited when we get his brother Preston here off his mission playing for us. But I think the key is the, the guy loves playing football. And um, I, it wasn't really this year. It was the end of last year. If you remember, he, he, he played in those four games as a red shirt. And we knew we had something really, really special with him. And so I think uh, looking at, at, at the, the tight end group and the receiving group, I, I feel really good with the future there. And the fact that he's so young and makes a lot of plays and big target, there's still a lot of room for improvement for those guys. But, um, yeah, just just impressed with, with uh, the talent on this team and the way they keep developing. All right, let's take one last question from Matt Biamonte. Coach, uh, Jake Oldroyd hit another 50-plus uh, yard field goal. What's it like to have a kicker like him who can score from such long range? That's huge. I mean, he's uh, – He's a, he's a big time weapon for us, and and the footing wasn't the best, you know, to kick field goals. But um, I, I love the way he's been kicking all year long, and then kicking field goals and and uh, kickoffs and things like that. He's he's been he's been money for us. So uh, I think a lot of that has to be said about the the, the snappers and and, and the uh, the holders. You know, I know Rico's done a great job holding for him, and and you're looking at Riggs and 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 Hogan snapping the ball, done a great job setting him up. So and the protection. So I, I think. Jake, he's got he, – he, I mean, you remember when he was a freshman, he kicked game-winning field goal in his first game. So uh, the guy has ice in his veins, and then let's keep, let's keep the, the run rolling. I, I would like – I've said it before, I would like to him for him to kick more PATs and field goals, though. Postgame coverage of BYU football continues with the Cougar Postgame Coaches Show. Brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union. Mountain America, guiding members forward for more than 80 years. Let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU 28, San Diego State 14 is our final score tonight. 21-0 run for BYU to end the game as the Cougars go to 10-1, picking up the Cougars' first 10-win season since the first season of... FBS Independence back in 2011. Greg Grubel and Riley Nelson here in our broadcast booth. Mitchell Jurgens has been on the field and in the Cougar locker room area, and he's with Kalani Sitaki, who has the headset on now. Kalani, congratulations on win number 10 this year. Thank you. Thank you. That was, that was a tough one, cold one, but I'm glad we got the win. I'm happy for our players. I, I'm going to give you the same trivia question I gave Dax, and he nailed it. You okay. ready for it? Give it to me. I, I, I gave him four teams, and he had to tell me what they have in common. Here are the four teams. BYU, Alabama, Notre Dame, and Coastal Carolina. I'm going to say ten wins. Yeah, that's it. The only, right. the only four. Dax didn't have the lead in, though, so Kalani, you, get, you get only partial credit. <laughs> those, are yeah. the, those are the only four teams with ten or more wins this year. Coastal has was, 11. They're 11-0. So. I was going to say handsome head coach. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> also true. <laughs> so, yeah, it, 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 it's, a, it, it's good company uh, in which to find yourself, and the season continues, too. There's more football to play. But as for today, San Diego State did a lot of the things that you'd expect them to do and, and really, when it comes down to it, there's a lot of ways to look at it, but being plus one in the margin tonight as opposed to minus one last week actually meant something. That was a big turnover you got from Drew, and it helped uh, turn the tide a bit today. Yeah, and, and just, um, you know, we knew that they're going to – They this is their, their MO. They, they run the ball, possess the ball. It's kind of what they did to us last year. They forced us to kick field goals. I believe we missed a couple of them last year, and then they got a lead on us, and and, and – you know, it kind of looked a little bleak early, and we just knew we had a lot of time. We just got got to go back to our game plan and and keep executing. You know, we we made mistakes, obviously, but uh, I said it in the, in the post game. I, this is a this is how um, San Diego State wins games. This is how they play. They prefer to do this where they grind the clock and possess the ball, and then and find ways to create havoc and win the game with the, with their defense. And and their defense is really really good. I mean. The, uh, really disruptive and make a lot of plays. I mean, that's that, that's how they win games. Coach, the running game early, it, they were hitting a lot of, it looked to me, uh, you know, some man and power concepts um, uh, straight up the gut. Anytime you guys could get them to move laterally, you were having success, but they were uh, finding some lanes straight north and south in the run game. But in the second half, it was uh, a lot 
uh, tougher sledding for them. Was that a scheme adjustment? Was it an effort adjustment? Was it an execution adjustment to shut down those, you know, A-gap, B-gap runs that they were having success on early on? Well, we just needed to defeat blocks. I mean, we, when we were bringing pressure, we weren't really defeating the blocks. We were just sitting, fitting, uh, fitting up on them, you know, and, yeah. and trying to find the ball. And, and they were hitting it so quick. And, and I think um, what's difficult is trying to simulate this type of uh, offense where they power run game counter and the the down zone that they run is so immediate and so i think guys just getting used to the game i mean the very the their inside zone game is very similar to what we saw last week and um the speed of it it, it shocks you a little bit you know but once our guys were able to settle down and beat defeat blocks and things like that i think they were able to get in the back a little bit more and just make it a little bit more uh stout you know but uh there's there's a lot of i mean there's a lot of times that that san diego state just found ways to make plays and fell forward and and got four or five yards, six yards in the first down, and that that causes issues, you know, and and creates a short short yardage for them situations, and easier to convert third downs. And even when we got them in third and long, they were able to convert some of those. So uh, we just had to keep. We knew it was going to be tough sledding. We just had to keep buying into our guys and and uh, and knowing that something was going to pop eventually. Yeah, and anytime you got a five eight back, that's people don't understand how difficult that is for a defense to, to see behind offensive linemen that are averaging you know six four six five. That's how they got their first touchdown was just kind of lost sight of the guy switching sides of the ball. And and maybe this is a question for someone on the offensive staff, but uh, Rex's second touchdown, he had a defensive end covering him. Was that something that was identified prior to the game? Was it a misalignment that was taken advantage of in game? Because talk about the mismatch of all mismatches. Uh, do you know what went on, on on that touchdown? Well, and they do that a lot on defense. I mean, it, it's it's uh, Brady Hoke's a defensive guy, and, and you're looking at some of the things that Rocky and them have done in the past decade there at San Diego State, and, and uh, they, they, they put their guys in a lot of compromising positions. And, and a lot of times, um, I mean, it, for Deanne, it's pretty good coverage. You know what I mean? And uh, they, Yeah, they, true. They, Zach had to make a good throw. Yeah, and they do a lot of zeros and – they they disrupt they they do a lot of movement and even their four man rush um, could bring uh, two DBs you know and and two D linemen and and drop other guys and so uh, with that style it's really hard to to get used to and and uh, be able to take advantage of but uh, I think there are times that when you have one on one coverage you have to make plays that the throw. Uh, Zach did to to Dax as a, a big time back shoulder throw mm-hmm. that he made, and you just have to you just have to convert those plays. A lot of teams can't do that, and these guys get away with it. And you know, in some plays, they got away with it on us. And the, I mean, they they put their guys out on the island quite often, and and ask a lot from their from their DBs and and their even their backers and and, and uh, D linemen with mismatches, and and they usually uh, get enough pressure on the quarterback to allow that to happen. So BYU tonight, uh, Kalani was perfect in the red zone. You got in four times. You just wanted to be be in the red zone more than you were last week. You got in four times. Uh, you scored three touchdowns. San Diego State, meantime, they, they got in the red zone uh, four times and, and ended up with just the one touchdown. And that was kind of a difference in the game as, as well tonight. Yeah, I mean, really, if you're looking at the stats, they had a lot more plays in, in the time of possession. But uh, also, um, you know, they were able to – sustain some drives and get some third downs and get some yards and uh you know i hate saying bend but don't break but like literally we were inches away from giving up touchdowns and we just had to you know just had to find uh be firm and and find a way to get a stop and uh things went our way you know it was it was a a tough field to play on and i I now know why we don't play december games in lavelle edwards stadium but (laughs) or why they put (laughs) heaters under the grass in lambo (laughs) yeah i mean it it was uh, it was icy in a lot of different spots and both teams were struggling with trying to get the footing right you know and and, uh, obviously the quarterback slipped on the one and on that one run that he was trying to scramble make a play i thought maybe max was hawking him down but who knows uh, you know and it's one of those things where uh, you don't plan for it but but the the conditions affect both teams and um, you know, we, we we just had to find ways to make plays. This is really a, 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 although we won by two scores, it was a lot closer than what people think, and and it just took some some of our guys just being resilient and sticking with the game plan. So we asked Dax about the weather, and he said, and he was wearing short sleeves. He said the cold wasn't that bad. You were not in short sleeves. What's your what's your verdict on the cold tonight? Well, I'm not running post routes and <laughs> and, and go routes. You know, I mean, if, uh, that, that would be a, a weird sight to see. But no, I. I yeah, I'm on the sideline trying to pace and trying to stay warm, but 
the boys, I mean, there's guys that, that didn't wear sleeves. And that's fine. I, I'm not a guy that thinks you have to prove your toughness by by going, you know, with sleeve no sleeveless. Yeah, out Kalani, there. can I share my view on that? <laughs> I always thought they always tried to do it as an intimidation fact, but it backfired for me. I was like, oh, good, I have an intelligence advantage against these guys who are out that's, here running around. That's me too. Yeah, yeah it's 20 like twenty uh, degrees with no <laughs> sleeves. Yeah, you can dig a hole with a spoon too. A shovel <laughs> would be a lot better, you know. But to, and so to me, it's like uh, I like to work smart, and as a coach. I don't need to prove anything. I, I I played in this game in cold games before, and and I wore sleeves, and and I was okay. You know, my my I don't have to question my toughness. I feel good <laughs> with my life. But, uh, well it's said, okay, hey, man. But, yeah, if it's freezing, I mean seriously, guys, if you wet your hair and it freezes, you should put a coat on. You know, and and if you're playing football, it's okay to wear sleeves. If not, run around like Dak so you stay hot and warm the whole time. Kalani Sitake is with us. We're taking a break. We'll return with some closing comments from the coach. BYU 28, San Diego State 14 is our final score. On the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to the Cougar Postgame Coaches Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to Riley Nelson and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU 10-1. San Diego State falls to 4-4 with a 28-14 Cougar win over the Aztecs here at frigid Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Greg Grubel, Riley Nelson with the head coach of the Cougars, Kalani Sitake. Uh, you didn't have Tyler Algier. You didn't think you'd have him tonight, and you didn't have him tonight. Did Lopini give you what you hoped to get from him? 13 carries, 83 yards, a nice long run setting up a touchdown tonight. Yeah, they, he, he did. And, and, you know, he got a little tired there. You can see that he's not used to being the, uh, the only one uh, out there on the field, but you know, I thought Sione Finau came in and, and relieved him a little bit, did some good things for him and pass pro and running some routes. And um, But, you know, for the most part, I, we didn't have enough plays on offense. I, I, would, I would like to have had more plays, and that's two things. The defense getting the ball back and the offense just sustaining drives, getting first downs. And so uh, just glad we were able to get the points, though. And, and, and um, you know, we've got to find ways to, to get the ball back. And and, and, and uh, I'm glad I, – I, listen, I'm glad that we got – uh, held him to 14 points, but uh, defensively we've got a lot, a lot more things that we that I know Coach Tuyaki wants to do better as a, as a group. And offensively, I know we can get more, we can make more big plays and, and get some more points on the board. So speaking of defense, Coach Troy at corner, Kavika at safety. Um, talk to us a little bit about that. I I guess not knowing, uh, want to give you the opportunity to clarify that maybe that had to do with getting, a, you know, your eleven best tacklers as uh, tackling was maybe an issue against Coastal Carolina. I know you were coming in against a run heavy team, but what there was a little bit of a switch up on, on the back end of the defense today. Was there a rhyme or reason for that? Yeah, that that was the key. I, you know, I thought that Coastal Carolina on some of the plays really targeted the corners, try to get out there and try to run on them and. And uh, it's, it's hard sometimes those guys that are man cover guys they, and young, you know, and not used to seeing this type of game. Uh, like last week and this week where they, they're, they're counted on to be sound tackling guys, you know. And um, So we kind of went back to what we've done. I don't know if you remember when we did against Navy, we wanted to put some sound tackling yeah. guys on the, on the edges. Yeah, your man and, guys didn't even make the trip, as I remember. Yeah, and, and that I mean, there's a couple reasons for that, right? But uh, this one was, I think... You know, we were able to get some guys on there in, in our nickel package, and and um, but but for the most part, we wanted our base defense to be guys that we can count on to make tackles, and and it wasn't perfect though. I mean, even though we did that, uh, San Diego State made us miss in, uh, on some plays, and and we gave up some big plays because uh, we didn't wrap up and we didn't strike well, and that's that's something that we need to get better. And you know, we're we're, we're going to have to tackle a little bit more in practice because we're not seeing the improvement that I need to see on the field. Okay, last couple things for you. Uh, first up, you, you, we did a, a joint combo coaches show with you and Mark Pope on Tuesday night this past week, and uh, Coach Pope's guys got the uh, got the mojo going this afternoon. Beat Utah at the Marriott Center, so it became a basketball football doubleheader day for us on the radio. Two wins for BYU today, Kalani. Yeah, a lot of fun, and, and uh, love being around Coach Pope and and his staff and, and that team, you know, and. and, and uh, we we're, we're blessed to have such great coaches in, in the athletic department where, that I can kind of share some ideas and, and get some ideas from and ask ask some advice and uh, it, it's been it's been really an honor for me to get to know these people and get to know the other student athletes on other teams and uh, seeing them have success and 
Yeah, that, that basketball game's awesome, man. I, I love the way Barcelo plays, and so uh, I'm a big basketball fan, and, and I'll be at all the games that I can see the, the women's and men's basketball team and try to see as many games as, as they'll let us when, when uh, fans are allowed back in the game. So back to football for a second. Uh, Jake Oldroyd hits his third field goal of 50 or more yards this year. Only Matt Payne back in 2004 when he had four 50-yarders has ever had more long field goals in a single season. What a great weapon to have for you out there tonight. And all, he's 13 for 13, hasn't missed a kick all year. He's, he's uh, you know, I, I've been really impressed with him and, and his preparation. Uh, he's grown a lot, and, and he's got, the, you know, the fact that he's, kicking off and, and I think having Rico doing the punts has been really it kind of relieves him a little bit more and stay focused on his place kicking and and uh, you know obviously he's done some really good things even with the onside kick so he's a master with his foot and, and looking forward to him making more PATs for us obviously if we can kick 50 yard field goals and then, then we know we can lean on him but he had to take some off because he was worried about the footing there and I think that thing barely squeaked over so mm-hmm. uh, you know maybe uh, hopefully, we, you know, we can play in a bowl game that allows him to uh, have great footing and make make more kicks for us. Coach, a uh, little bit broader picture here and uh, understand there's more football to be played, but I also know that uh, between the end of the regular season and bowl game and as you're heading into winter conditioning, will be here before we know it. And there's an interesting consideration for some of your players, and that's uh, basically how to manage their eligibility. You know, we had seniors night tonight, but the reality is all those guys, if they wanted to, could come back and suit up, at least as I understand the rule. And uh, I, when I was a player, I remember uh, getting counsel and advice uh, from my coach so as as players come into your office I imagine over the next couple of months kind of talking with you what's uh, going to be your approach is it going to be one of uh, you know uh, uh, kind of an individual evaluation for each player or are you welcoming back a- any and everybody that wants to come and take advantage of the COVID year yeah well I mean we already have so like Lopa Uriah didn't even do senior day because he wanted to come back and and the other seniors tonight are still thinking about it. You know, um, uh, obviously Matt Bushman and, and I think Kyrie Stone are going to go out. But you know, I, I think no one's made a decision yet. I think these guys have been so focused on just playing football that they've kind of pro- like held it off. They've kind of just procrastinated on the decision and said, you know what, we just want to play football, want to practice, and all those guys have done that. Even the other classmen and just worried about playing the game, which I appreciate. But when it comes time to make a decision, I'm going to do what's best for them. Um, our, our team and our program will will function. We'll, we'll do great. But whatever's the best for the, these young men, and and if it's playing and getting to the NFL, uh, you know, I obviously talk to a lot of scouts, a lot of coaches, and general managers, and and so I I, I can give them some really good insight. And if there's a chance for them to go out there and live out their dreams, I'm really going to push them towards that. Time for the Mountain America Field Goal Recap. For each field goal BYU makes, Mountain America Credit Union donates $250 to the American Red Cross. Today, the Cougars made two field goals for a running total of 13 this season, bringing the donation total to $4,000, including the 50-yard field goal bonuses, and there have been three of those this season. Uh, the Zach Wilson question, uh, Kalani, what does your gut tell you right now about uh, what, what he's most likely to do when this season ends? I don't, you know, I don't know. We haven't really had that, that discussion, but I, I mean, people are projecting him pretty high, and and and, and that's good. But there's all, all other people on our on our team that are getting the evaluation, and and we're going to talk about it, just like we did with with Matt and Kyrus, and it's going to be their decision. I I I thought those guys were going to leave last year, you know, and and the fact that they came back was great. The guys that are that are, are, are seniors that have already graduated, I think some of them said, hey, they want to move on, and others. I've decided that they, they they don't want to think about it yet until they get done with the bowl game. So um, I'm not sure, uh, but I, I I want what's best for him, and, and, and that's going to be the, the thing in my mind. I, I think recruits will know that when they come here, I'm always going to put them in the position for them to have success right away. And, and if they decide to stay, then that's going to be on them, and then I'll get a more committed person that wants to be here, just like we got from – Matt Bushman and, and from Kyrstonga this this year. Well, at a great quarterback school, Zach Wilson is a top 10 QB in a lot of really uh, meaningful categories, and he entered that, another top 10 tonight with uh, career touchdown passes. He has 53 now for his career. Uh, any sense whatsoever, uh, Kalani, about uh, where your next football game will be played? Or is it just wide open, or do you, do you have a vibe one way or the other? Is it just totally you're going to wait and see? Well, I think that Tom's talk, doing all the talking with ESPN and with everyone that, that with the bowl games, and 
And I, I said in the post game that that if there's a chance to fit another game in there, we would love to do it. <laughs> we just we just want to play football, and and if we can know as soon as possible so we can prep, that would be great. But uh, our guys will take it whenever we can get it, and uh, obviously we're going to be on the road if we do play next weekend, and. And we're, we're no more be... December games in, in Provo. <laughs> I, I don't think so. I don't think that's going to be an, an option. But unless we can put a huge bubble over this thing, you know. But I, I honestly, our guys love to play the game, and 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 uh, I don't know how it's going to look. I don't know what the bowl games look like, but uh, maybe if a bowl uh, bowl games are still deciding if they want to play or, uh, or not, you know. And so yeah, yeah, we'll, there's been cancellations yeah, as recently as a week or two ago. Some of them are being relocated, and so I think we kind of sort that out. And, and if there's a chance to play a game in between there, we would love to. But if not, I mean, you know, we don't want to we don't want to be out there like making demands. We just love playing the game of football. And if not, then we'll just be thankful for what we get. And this this whole year has been a blessing that we were able to get uh, to the 11 games at this point. Kalani, I kid you not, um, they may just be bleeding the system for the winter, but the sprinklers are on right now here on the turf, <laughs> and they're turning into snowmakers, basically. So the sprinklers are on, and it could just be getting the water out of the system for the winter, but it's pretty cool uh, to see, the, but, but it looked like snowmakers right now. They're going to make sure we don't play a home game next week. That's what they're <laughs> doing right now. They're they're making, making certain that, it, if anything, it's a hockey game. Yeah, or, or a cross-country <laughs> ski run or something. Well, all right, that's going to do it for tonight. It is it is late. We'll let you get some sleep and, and uh, get ready for whatever is to come next for you and the guys. Kalani, congratulations once again again on picking up win number 10 getting an 11th game in in this uh, challenging season and we know there's more ball to play and we're excited to chronicle wherever your next game is going to be so once again kudos to you and the team and i know cougar nation uh, is grateful for you and all the effort that's been put in all season long for games not only here in provo but uh, around the country to to give uh, uh, fans as much joy as you have so thank you uh, as you thank cougar nation i'm sure yeah thank you guys you guys have done an amazing job greg the voice of the Cougars is an honor to be your friend. Same thing, you know, with Mitch and Riley. Appreciate you guys, and to all the fans out there, love you guys. So, I mean, uh, we 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 feel your love and your support, and it's really carried us through in in, in these times. Even uh, responding to the loss last week, we couldn't have done it without the support from our fans and the Cougar Nation that's out there. Love you guys. Go Cougs. Thank you. Thanks again, Kalani. All right, that is Kalani Sitaki. We will come back and bring you Cougar Nation now. You can tweet us your comments for the show, hashtag BYUCNN, hashtag BYUCNN for Cougar Nation now. Greg and Riley upstairs. Mitch will join us soon, and we'll be talking with you uh, via Twitter. So tweet us now, hashtag BYUCNN. Some like to use the email. That's like snail mail of the old days. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's the new snail mail. It's the email. It's Cougar Nation Now at BYU.edu. Cougar Nation Now, one long word with two N's in the back. Cougar Nation Now at BYU.edu if you like the email. Otherwise, we'll see you on the Twitter, hashtag BYUCNN, right after this. On the new skin, BYU Sports Network.